Well, it looks like it's that time again. Microsoft is up to their little games, and now we have to update our methods for bypassing a Microsoft account in Windows 11. Stay tuned. So I did a video about a year ago showing all the different methods of bypassing a Microsoft account in Windows 11, and there were quite a few of them, and all of those methods have continued to work up until recently. But with the latest updates to Windows 23H2 and the upcoming 24H2, they've disabled pretty much all of them. Well, kind of. There's still one that works, but you have to do it a little bit differently than you did before. That's what we're going to be talking about today. But first, I got to pay some bills. So check out today's sponsor. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop with a valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now. On with the video. So yeah, Microsoft decided to go and make my video outdated. I'm sure that wasn't their intention, but at least it gives me a chance to update it. I think the thing that upsets me the most is that my favorite method of just writing the local user account name into the Microsoft account box doesn't work anymore. That's unfortunate because that was really easy. And even when I made the last video, I said that that one was probably gonna be the one that stopped working first. However, it didn't. Microsoft let us use that workaround for at least a year, but unfortunately, it doesn't work anymore. In fact, pretty much all of the methods in my original video a year ago don't work anymore if followed exactly the way I did them in the other video. But luckily, one of them still works, but you have to do it a little bit differently. So let's jump on the computer and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, as you can see, we're in Windows 11 already here, but I'm gonna be doing this from VirtualBox. I decided I'm gonna do it from a virtual machine just to make it repeatable because there's a couple different ways I'm gonna show you how to do this. And I've also tested this in Windows 11 Home and Pro, and the Pro that I'm actually using is the 24H2. And this one has the new installer for Windows 11, and this should apply to once 24H2 comes out. Because it's using its new installer, I'm pretty sure this is gonna be, for the most part, what we see once it's finally released. However, the first way that I'm gonna show you how to do this requires the network to be turned off. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the settings of my virtual machine, go down to network, and then just uncheck the network adapter. Now on yours, this is gonna be different you're actually gonna have to unplug your network adapter. However, if you can't do that for whatever reason, I'm gonna show you another way to be able to do the same thing with the network attached, but they're just slightly different from each other. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start our virtual machine here. And this should start with setup in progress. In fact, it's starting right at the last point in setup when it requires you to actually put in a Microsoft account. So it's gonna take a minute for this to boot up and get into setup, and once it does, I'll go ahead and skip to it. Okay, here we are in Windows 11, the last stage of the Windows 11 setup. We're gonna go ahead and pick whatever settings you would normally pick. I'm obviously gonna pick the US settings because I'm in the US. We're gonna skip the keyboard settings, and we're also gonna skip um, installing a network driver, obviously, because we don't want our network installed. Now, what they're gonna do is they're gonna make you, they're gonna essentially force you to install a network driver in order to create a Microsoft account. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold Shift F10 to open up our command prompt, and then from here, we're gonna type in O-O-B-E backslash, and there's no space here, just backslash, bypass, NRO. And then once you hit enter here, it's going to restart the system. And just go ahead and let it restart and then we'll get back up to the point of where we have to set up our Microsoft account. And I'm gonna skip up until we're back into setup so you don't have to sit here and wait for it. Okay, so we're back in setup and essentially you're gonna have to answer all the same questions over again, but that's okay. So go ahead and go through these pick whatever you wanna pick, go ahead and skip the keyboard right here, and then all of a sudden we're back to the install network driver, but as you can see, 
we have a new link here that says, I don't have internet. So if you go ahead and click on that, it'll go through for a minute and it'll ask you for your local account name. So you can go ahead and type in a local account. You can type in a password if you want, hit next, and you can go ahead and finish the rest of the setup process just like you would normally. And you should log into Windows with a local account. So I recommend using this workaround with your ethernet unplugged. However, if you for whatever reason can't disconnect your ethernet or you just don't want to, then let me show you how you can do the same thing with your network connected. Let's jump back on the computer. Okay, the beautiful thing about a virtual machine is that we don't have to wait for this to finish. We can just go ahead and power off the machine because we're gonna go ahead and restore it for the snapshot anyway. We're gonna go ahead and restore our snapshot. We don't need to make another snapshot. We're just gonna restore that one. We're gonna go into settings right here just to verify that the network is in fact turned on. Now, my network is set to NAT, but that doesn't matter. Whatever the network is set to should be just fine. And you're not gonna be doing this from a virtual machine anyway. So now that we know that it's on, we're gonna go ahead and start this. And this should bring us back to the very same point we were at before we did the last workaround. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip to where we're in Windows Setup, so you don't have to sit here and wait for it to boot. Okay, and here we are back in Windows Setup for, what, the third time, I think, now. So go ahead and answer your questions just like you would before. And once we get through, we're gonna skip our keyboard layout. And then, of course, it's gotta check for updates. And I may skip through some of these parts just to get us to where we're going so this video isn't 20 minutes long. Okay, so it wants us to name our device. We're gonna go ahead and hit skip for now. And then the next screen, I think should be, okay, no, we wanna set it up for personal use. Now there are some workarounds that tell you to set it up for work and school. I don't recommend doing that. And the reason why is because it's going to configure your system as if it's on a domain. And since that's probably not the configuration you want, I recommend sticking with set for personal use. The workarounds that tell you to use it as a domain client are probably not the best route to go, but if that's the one that works for you, it's the one that works for you. But for this one, I recommend hitting setup for personal use and then go ahead and hit next. And at this point, of course, it wants you to sign into a Microsoft account, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go ahead and hit shift F10. And then from our command prompt, we're going to type just like before, OOBE backslash bypass NRO and hit enter. And it's going to reboot the system. So it looks like we're going to have to go through setup one more time. And like before, I'll go ahead and skip to setup starting so you don't have to sit and wait for it to boot. Okay, so here we are back in setup. So once again, go ahead and answer these questions, the default of whatever you wanna answer them. I'm gonna go ahead and skip our keyboard layout. And then from here, it's gotta check for updates again. And this might take a minute checking for updates just like it did before, and I'll probably skip over it. And again, I'm gonna skip for now for naming the device. Okay, and just like before, I recommend setting it up for personal use and go ahead and hit next. And then obviously, well, this is exactly the same screen. So a lot of people are gonna be faced with this and think that the bypass NRO workaround doesn't work anymore because it asks you for a Microsoft account again. However, that isn't the case. If you hit Shift F10 again, open up our command prompt, we're gonna use another workaround, but we're gonna use it in conjunction with the bypass NRO. And that's essentially gonna be IP config space forward slash release. And what this will do is it'll actually release our IP address. It'll essentially kick us off the internet. It's kind of like unplugging your ethernet adapter without actually unplugging it. And we can go ahead and close this and then we can push the sign in button. And as you can see, boom, local account. It doesn't actually ask us to sign into a Microsoft account. So at this point, we can just type in our regular name. We can type in our password, go ahead and hit next, and then follow the prompts in order to get you to the point of logging into Windows. Now, it's gonna take a minute to boot up, so I'll go ahead and skip ahead until Windows is booted up, and I'll show you the last step in this method. Okay, so as you can see, we are now officially in Windows 11 without having to sign up for a Microsoft account. However, the next step that I recommend doing is as you can see right here, our ethernet is freaking out because it's not connected and our icons aren't showing up because Windows can't finish setting up because we don't have a network. So the first thing that I would do once it boots up into Windows is just restart the system. Now, the reason you have to restart once setup is finished is because you used IP config to release your IP address. What you could do is simply open a command prompt and run IP config forward slash renew to reconnect to your network or 
you can just simply restart the system. Now, let's jump back on the system and I'll show you how to stop Windows from showing you the stupid nag screens every couple of days that want you to sign into a Microsoft account. Let's get it done. So just to confirm a couple things, I'm gonna go ahead and hit start, go to settings, and then once settings opens, I'm gonna click on system and I'm gonna scroll all the way down to about. And as you can see in about, we are in fact running 24H2. So while we're here in settings, we're gonna go ahead and kick a, click account. And as you can see, we are in fact running a local account. But what we wanna do is we wanna disable the notifications that bug us every couple of days to sign up to a Microsoft account. So to do that, go ahead and click on system again here. And then from system, you wanna scroll down to notifications. And then from notifications, go ahead and scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says additional settings. And when you click on that, you've got these three settings right here. Now, the one that shows you the nag screens is the middle one right here. You can just uncheck that one if you'd like the other stuff. However, I typically recommend unchecking all three of these. And in fact, typically I actually uncheck all of these and turn notifications off completely, but that's up to you. The most important one is if you go down here, make sure you uncheck the suggest ways to get the most out of Windows and finish setting up the device. That will stop those stupid Microsoft nag screens from coming up all the time. So inevitably, there may come a time where this workaround doesn't work anymore either. However, not all hope is lost. Ultimately, more workarounds will be found, and we also have the greatest workaround of all, and that's Windows Update. A Microsoft account is only required when doing a fresh install of Windows 11. You can upgrade a version of Windows without having a Microsoft account. So ultimately, if this workaround doesn't work for you, you can always just install 22H2 and use the previous workarounds and then upgrade to 24H2 or 25H2 or whatever the current build of Windows is at the time you're watching this video. Now, for people with systems that are running S mode, that might be the only option for you. Because unfortunately, if your system is running S mode, then you can't run the command prompt during setup by pushing Shift F10. However, the original workaround where you just type any random username and password into the Microsoft account screen does work on 22H2 even with S mode enabled. So if you have a new system that's running S mode, I recommend just reloading Windows from the very beginning with 22H2, and then using the previous workarounds to get around the Microsoft account requirement. This will benefit you in a couple of ways. For one, reloading the system will get rid of all of the junk that comes on the system from the factory. But you can also use my workaround to disable S mode without having a Microsoft account which can be found right here. Unfortunately though, this workaround will only work if you're running an older build of Windows 11, but the nice thing is that you can always download an ISO and install an older build. But as always, you guys have a great day.